So this is the new iPhone 6, and you already know the big news, it's bigger. That's because Apple has actually increased the size of the display, almost by an inch, which bumps up all the other dimensions of the phone as well, except one. The iPhone 6 is thinner by almost a millimeter, and that's actually pretty important, because as you make a phone larger, you really need to make it thinner so you can hold it comfortably in your hand. Thanks to that slimness and the new rounded edges of the phone, the iPhone 6 is easy to hold. Is it as perfectly engineered for my palm as an iPhone 5S? Probably not, but the difference isn't really all that big, and you do get a much larger screen as a result. That screen, by the way, is bright and colorful and fast. It allows you to read more, see more. You can even add an extra row of apps on the bottom of the home screen. It's a real improvement. Now, with the old iPhone, even someone like me with small, childlike hands could get their thumb to reach every corner of the display. That's a little bit harder on the iPhone 6, but Apple does have a new trick called reachability, and it helps a lot. All you have to do is double tap the home button, and the top portion of your screen slides down, making it easier to reach. It's fast and simple, and I picked it up as a habit within a day. Another change that Apple made was the location of the sleep-wake button. It used to be on the top, but now they've moved it to the side so it's easier to reach. Internally, the iPhone 6 has a new processor, a new co-processor, and a bunch of other technical mumbo-jumbo that you don't really need to care about. Suffice it to say, it works really well. One feature you do want to pay attention to, available storage has now doubled to 128 gigabytes. So if you're the kind of person who likes to take a lot of photos and videos, shoot away. The iPhone 6's battery has improved, but not by leaps or bounds. You might pick up an extra hour or three over an old iPhone 5S, which is kind of disappointing considering that the 5S was already getting dinged by some for having lackluster battery life. Every year, Apple improves the cameras and its phones, and this year is no exception. The iPhone 6's new camera can focus faster and shoot even slower slow-mo. Bottom line, if you haven't gotten rid of your dedicated point-and-shoot camera or camcorder by now, the iPhone 6 might make you. So should you get one? Yeah. If you're coming from an old iPhone, the jump in screen size alone makes this a worthwhile upgrade. If you're coming from Android, well, you've known about larger screen phones for years, but now that Apple makes one, you have one less reason to choose Android over iOS, and I happen to think iOS is the better of the two. Apple may have resisted making a large screen phone for a while, but now that they have, they might have made the best one yet.